Anyway, so while I'm talking about drawing anatomy, drawing physique, I mean, I'm talking about drawing anatomy, anatomy and physique when you are a uh, kind of a cartoonist. You're not necessarily realistic. I mean, I can draw realistic, but uh, I don't like doing that so much. You know, I, I'm more of a cartoonist kind of guy. You know, I just like all my old school idols, you know, like Van Day and Phil Foglio and Sam Keith and... Kelly Jones and all these guys, Todd McFarlane and all these kind of guys, you know? So, um, anyway, when you get to it, you start drawing, um, you know, there's a different, everybody inks differently, so that, that's one way. So, a lot of people are, you know, um, it's kind of weird because some people draw anatomy well, and then, it, I'm talking about comic-wise, and then they go draw something in ink. Uh, I mean, if they have somebody that inks them, it could not look so well, which I guess is like a controversy with, like, Jack Kirby, because Jack Kirby's a really great artist. A lot of people say the guy that inked Jack Kirby's art was sloppy and, you know, led to some things. It led to some controversy. Anyway, for me, I, I ink and pencil my own stuff. So what I do is I like to have, like, a thick line. I do these kind of hyper-gothic lines where I draw a lot of line weight, you know. And, um, and then I do a lot of different, they're not just lines. They're lines that, you know, kind of involuntarily force your, your view to, uh, uh, look at certain lines that would accent what they, you know, what would be musculature and such, you know, or fat or whatever. So, uh, I have this weird way of doing this with the uh, art by symbolizing these nooks and crannies with, uh, different, different shaped thinking. So here I drew this character. It was kind of, this is kind of like a, you know, it's not necessarily a knight. A lot of people, well, that's a knight, you know. It's more kind of like a fantasy 300 thing with the Spartans, you know what I mean? I mean, in the movies, I mean, the Spartans wouldn't be naked, they'd be all armored up, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's what the 300 didn't get right, so we have that, uh, then I have one that's a little bit more accurate, let me see, go over here, and strangely enough, see, this is more, this is a, a version of a Knight Templar, uh, a kind of a cross between a Templar Knight and a Teutonic Knight, which came later on. But uh, mainly a Templar Knight, and uh, you just all drawn ink, regular inks, regular pencils, nothing fancy. And you know, once again, I do this. I do this line weight thing where I do some of it dark, and then I come in with a thinner, uh, a thinner pen. You know, whatever pencil. You know, sometimes they're sharpie, sometimes they're just fine. I like this brand. You know, it's cheap. They're my dollar store. So uh, you know, you put them together, and uh, it kind of like balances the weight of the thick line and the thin line. So this is more of a, uh, this is actually <laughs> really more of a more realistic version of a Knight Templar. You know, they would have the chain mail up there, and they would have the, you know, um, the, the kind of a weird cloth, almost like a toga-looking thing, but, uh, you know, that one that shrouds their armor they have underneath it. Then they got some plate armor. A lot of people think Templar Knights did not have plate armor that came later on. But they did have plain garments, except they had to accent it with uh, chainmail, mostly. Because, of course, you know, I mean, you think about them in the Middle Eastern, you know, climate, you know, where and all that. I mean, a lot of people would dehydrate and die. So, uh, just for them to have this, something that heavy, chainmail, so forth, and that climate is just miraculous. But anyway, I'm not getting into that. So, I'm getting to say that this is a, a more realistic version of it, which is... Uh, Ah, this wing van. You get to draw outside, dude. Which is, in contrast to a more fantasy version, it's kind of like more of a Conan, you know, Conan the Barbarian thing. You know, really exaggerated, really exaggerated musculature, you know. But the thing when you're doing musculature, even if you're exaggerating, you just can't, you know, throw lines anywhere, you know. You, have the, you know, I know where the muscles intercede, you know, and envelop with the... And the legs, and you know, in the chest, and in the arms. Even if you exaggerate, you still got to have the proper order. That's why I always tell people it's good to have anatomy. So, um, you know, I'm, you know, I draw these things with no reference. You know, I'm a big fan of Frank Frazetta, Frank Frazetta, and um, you know, Frank Frazetta always teaches that you know you should uh, learn anatomy, be able to do it out of your head, which is kind of a strange thing. If you ever look at Boris Vallejo, Boris Vallejo was a competitor of him, like in the eighties and nineties. And, uh, Boris Vallejo is very good, he's a very good airbrush artist, but the thing is, um, you could tell he had pictures that he was using reference from, because, uh, a lot of the characters that he draws in his fantasy pictures, they look like they're posing. 
Lord, Franzetta, that's not the case. Franzetta looks like, you know, these people look like they're jumping off the canvas, you know, and all kind of different adjectives and such things. So basically, you got to know your anatomy, you know. Just know your anatomy, and then once you know your anatomy, you can detail them. So that's one of the things I always say, hey, man. You know what? You got to know your anatomy in and out, even if it's cartoonish and exaggerated. That's pretty cool.